Yeah, I'd say this fork oil is well past its prime. On this episode, we'll work on giving this old KLR some new legs. So with the frame painted, the next steps to getting the bike standing on its on two wheels uh, will be to get the forks installed. And as you can see, I've painted the bottoms of the forks the same black to match the frame. And I've wrapped them just to keep them safe. I'll be installing the DDC Complete Fork Upgrade Kit from Cogent Dynamics, which includes the, the new progressive springs, the spacers, and uh, these uh, cartridge emulators as well. This video isn't sponsored by Cogent Dynamics, but uh, they make some real quality products, so I suggest you check them out. And if you have any questions about the KLR or other bikes, you can just drop them an email, and they've always been super responsive to get back with me. So again, just check them out. I'll drop a link to um, their website in the description. So I don't have it shown in view here, but the kit also comes with the fork oil as well. So this should be everything that we needed to get started. So first things first, I need to remove these caps. And although I didn't do this, I highly recommend you loosen the caps while they're still clamped on the bike. That way you have the least amount of chance of damaging the fork tubes in any way. But since I forgot to do that, I'm just putting a rag and putting it in the clamp. Um, it doesn't take much pressure and uh, the caps came off of these forks fairly easily. So here you can see the stock uh, spacer, which is metal. The ones included with the Cogent Dynamic kit, um, those are some type of plastic. They're much thicker though than the, these thin metal ones. So now I just need to pour the old oil out, take the old springs out, and uh, let these tubes drain for a while. You'll probably hear it fall out, but in case you do not, just notice that there is a washer that sits on top of the spring. So you want to retrieve that and make sure to put that in when you go to reinstall everything. So I'll just set this fork up so it can drain the rest of the oil out while I work on the other fork. So for the other fork, we'll just repeat the process. To make sure you've gotten all the old fork oil out, you should pump the fork several times up and down and also let it sit upside down for a good 10-15 minutes to let it drain out. You'll be surprised how much of the old oil will continue to drain. Now that that's done, we need to put the new fork oil in. I'm going to hold it in the vise to make um, that process a little bit easier. And then after the fork oil, we'll move on to installing the new uh, spring emulator and spacers. So this is the fork oil that came with the um, DDC kit. So I'm going to add a little bit. Add this very slowly. It doesn't take as much as you would think. Um, so after I've added um, a decent amount, what I want to do is, again, pump the fork up and down. That'll just get the oil um, in all the places it's supposed to be and also eliminate all the air bubbles. So you're supposed to pump until you stop hearing or, or seeing a lot of air bubbles come out of the oil. So the instructional manual provided um, the oil height. There are tools to make this easier, but I've measured this and from the bottom of this Allen key to the little notch is exactly, um, I think it's 110 millimeters uh, where I need to be. And so um, I'm just going to go with the dipstick method and that's just going to be adding some oil slowly until it reaches the right height. So in this case you can see that there's no oil, so I just want to add a little bit more. And it's also good to note that the spring and uh, the cartridge and other parts are not installed at this point. Again, they make a tool that makes this process a lot easier. It's a syringe where you can set it the right height. So you just add the oil and um, you'll suck out all the extra. Um, in my case, I didn't want to pony up for the extra $12 or whatever it was. 
Uh, although looking back, if, if you plan to do this more than a, a few times, it's well worth having that um, piece of kit. So it may be hard to see on the camera, but I finally uh, got the oil to the spot I wanted it. It's just barely touching the top of this uh, Allen key. So I can proceed to installing the uh, cartridge emulator. Cogent does make a tool for this, but I found that uh, if it's a half inch socket, and then I've just added a little bit of tape to the socket to give some resistance. This holds the DDC in place, then I'm just using a bunch of extensions. When you install this, you'll hear it click um, and seat inside the um, fork. So there shouldn't be any question as to it being in the right, you know, if it's seated or not. You'll, you'll definitely hear and feel it. So now we can proceed to installing the spring. And since this is a Gen 1, um, Cogent only sells one spring option, and it is a uh, dual rate spring. Next, we install the spacers. And just as a check, we should have about 10 millimeters from the top of the tube to the top of the spacer, just to make sure that everything's in place like it should be. And again, um, I didn't mention it, but the top of the spring uh, did have the washer installed. So now we just have to install the cap, and this fork will be done. Just a word of caution, the cap threads are very fine and the caps are aluminum and the forks of course steel. So be sure you're putting them on there straight and do it by hand before you do any um, anything with the tool. It would be very bad um, if you were to cross thread it. It would probably just mess up the cap, but you could mess up the tube as well. So just be careful when installing those. So I'll repeat the same process for the other fork. Just testing to make sure there's no odd noises or anything, um, but it looks like we're all good to go. So I need to do one more thing before calling these forks done, and that's to address some of these um, scratches and the pitting from the rusting. Uh, the rust is in a location that's not really um, doing anything, it's more just cosmetic. There's not any on the spots where the fork seals sweep, but nonetheless we can make this look a little bit better and provide some protection for the future. So. What I've got here is some aluminum and some salt water. And if you haven't done this before, it's a really good trick that's low cost and it will take care of uh, the rust. So the aluminum oxide and the salt will um, react with the rust and remove it and it'll start turning the rust black. And um, it also polishes the, um, the chrome surface on these forks. So just do this all over and then we'll look at it when we're done, but uh, it, it, it helps a whole lot. So now that it's done all over, I'll just wipe off the um, water and the residue. And you can already see, I don't know how much it'll show up on video, but you can see um, how much shiner everything is. And now to finish it off, I'm gonna just be adding some polish this is just some uh, metal polish that I have. It'll just help protect and hopefully get into the, the pits and keep the rust from coming back, or at least coming back so quickly. So now that that's done, you can see the difference here. Um, no pitting or no rusting um, that you can see with the eye. So with the forks done, we can move on to completing the swing arm. And really all I have to do here is install a couple of bearings and a few um, rubber bushings and chain guard. So I have a kit for the linkage arm and for the swing arm. Um, I threw them all in one box and threw everything in the freezer so it could um, hopefully help with the installation of the bearings by getting them really cold, shrinking them just a little bit, and then I'll heat up the swing arm um, just a little bit too to help press in this bear these bearings. And hopefully um, this process will go pretty smoothly. So 
got the first bearing in place, and I'm hoping I can use this really heavy duty C-clamp to press everything into place. Um, but as you'll see in just a minute, um, it works to a degree, but I had to finish everything up by putting it in the vise. And I even had to use a threaded rod, and, or actually a very heavy duty bolt, and nut to install some of these. These are needle roller bearings, so you have to be really careful when handling these or you um, could lose some of the rollers inside the bearings. So one way to, do, uh, to avoid that is to install the sleeves or keep the sleeves in there as much as possible. So it's not all shown here, but um, some of these bearings gave me some real fits trying to get them installed. And after I put a micrometer to them, I noticed that the outside diameter of some of these bearings were in excess of nine thousandths um, larger on the uh, outside diameter than the stock bearings. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be that way. Um, in any case, um, it, it sure did make um, it difficult to get these fully seated. So after the bearings are installed, we need to pop on these seals and lube the bearings with the provided um, grease, install the sleeves, and then that's all for the bearings. I'm only showing one here, but I have to do the same process for the other two. Bearings that are at the front of the swing arm that are the pivot point for the swing arm. But uh, we'll move on here to install the, re the rest of the pieces that we'll be installing on the swing arm at this time. First is this chain guard. And you can see up at the top left of the swing arm to where the previous um, chain guard wore through and it actually um, wore down a little bit of the frame arm, but it wasn't uh, enough to cause a problem, I don't believe. So um, I didn't really address it. In any case, I'm installing this new um, rubber sleeve that'll keep everything nice and protected for the future. So at this point in the video where the, my battery died on my camera and I wasn't aware so I did lose some footage that I intended to capture but all I really did was install um, the other seals on the front of the swing arm that you see there and the fasteners that hold on this rubber um, chain guard. But here you can see everything installed as it should be and I'm really liking this matte finish on the swing arm. I debated leaving it aluminum or even polishing it up, but I'm glad I went this route instead. Again, I'm really unsure about this Pivot Works bearings. Uh, I have used their products in the past with no issues, but uh, it was a little odd that these bearings were, were oversized that much. I don't think that the OEM bearings were damaged in any way, and I did check that the bearing numbers matched on both of the bearings, so they should have been this to the same spec. So um, the fact that they were larger on the outside diameter was a little bit odd. In any case, here are the parts, all done. So we're one step closer to being able to start assembling the frame and getting this bike standing on its own two wheels. Anyway, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to click that bell. Thanks.